We are talking about cinematic language for the small screen and hello again to everybody. I uh, see Ian has joined and thanks again Anton and Richard and Petri for being there. We're having quite a lot of fun tonight in the studio. There's been one or two hiccups but it's been fun and I'm so loving this material because this is really an interesting space of talking about this stuff that really talk to us on a layer that we may not even begin to understand. So tonight we're going to now get into lighting. I'm going to do a little bit of a, a do-it-yourself kit to help you light, uh, build a, a lighting kit for yourself at home. All of this stuff is gleaned from the presenter framework. You can find more on my website and pretty shortly we're actually going to place all of the uh, previous webinars on the site as well so there will be access in this section. We're talking about the eyes, the three key positions for light, and possibly, if time permits, well, I'm sure we're going to do our best, a, a lighting demo. So, let's talk lighting. Now, as we start out, there's, of course, a selection or type of lighting that you can look at because of the kind of presentation that you're doing, because of the kind of tone that you have, and what it is that you're trying to say. If I have to show you some of those lighting conditions, then maybe you want to go and look at something that's natural light. If you're in an office with a lot of light, um, you could look at something more cosmetic because you're creating all of the lighting yourself. That's always magical. We're doing that in the studio. And then you want to go and look at some dramatic light if you're doing something totally dramatical, <laughs> as it says. The starting point of everything is really to look at the eyes. Now, you have to be able to see the eyes and sometimes, and this is what I want to show you now, I'm going to do this with a light right now to show you the sparkle in my eye. So there's a light that's a key light that's sitting here and I'm going to ask Merit just to bring it down a little bit and if you look at the shot, there we go, you can actually see, thank you, where the eyes are beginning to just sparkle a little bit more. I'm going to ask Merit to also just step the light because it's closer to me, just back 20 centimeters or so. Thank you. You can immediately see what that's doing to a scene because it's creating a shadow under the nose, but it's also bringing a sparkle of light in. And if I had to go to the long shot, you'll see now that there's a prominent light on the one side, but you'll also see that there's another light on this side. That's the fill light. I'm going to ask Merit to switch it off and you're getting immediately a sense of something a little bit more dramatic, but now you can see what this main light, which we call a key light, is doing. I'm going to show it to you on a, on a floor plan just now. What's interesting here is you want to notice that the nose also has a shadow. Now, sometimes I see people sitting in a room and they have a direct overhead light, which makes their nose so hot like a triangle, and it creates a terrible shadow underneath the nose. So you always want to be aware of what the nose shadow is doing, because if it is too long and it falls on the mouth, which is what we really want to see, then we're in trouble because if I had to use this lighting now in the long shot, uh, which it's not cutting to, uh, thanks Merit, um, on the long shot, you suddenly see that the nose shadow is becoming a little bit long and you want to be careful that it doesn't fall onto the, uh, the, the lips because we want to see the mouth. So if we had to go and look at what it is, we want to see the eyes, is the nose shadow clearing the lips, and then um, is the mouth visible. If you had to see this in a floor plan from above, I'm going to show you this now at the hand of a, a shot um, where that is a, fill, a, a key light. So the key light is really what's helping you to get the main part of the scene going and you want to be careful that it's not too low because if the key light is too low, it could become a little bit evil. From here you have of course that fill light, which uh, there's an example of a fill light and then we're going to come to uh, quite an interesting one, which is to talk about the backlight. Now, the purpose of a backlight really is quite simple, and we're going to get into a, a demo of it right now. In fact, I'm going to ask Merit at this stage to switch off the key light for me first. And so you're going to see that there's just a lot of light coming in from the set from behind. Ooh, that is a little bit dramatic. And I'm also going to ask him to switch off the actual set light. Now, we have light boxes. There we go which um, are helping us to get rid of bad shadows. But in this process, you can see what my backlight is doing. That is a light that's behind the set there, and that's what's quite interesting as we uh, start to work with the backlight, and in this instance, it's a little bit side light. And of course, there's a little bit of a glow light that's coming from the front of uh, the desk as well. So now we're gonna go into a little bit of a lighting demo, which I would like to show you. Um, in this uh, next section. So 
if I had to show you a, I'm going to get a light that we have in the studio to show you a little bit about how this works. And this is a light that is, uh, it's a television light. Uh, and I'm going to switch it on, which is probably going to blind you if that happens. But you can get a sense of television lighting. If you really were going to buy it, it has a fantastic flip so that you could really, you know, get nice motion on it. It usually comes on a stand. And I'm going to take the, the filter off. What's interesting about this type of light is this particular one has a temperature shift. So we can do blue light. We can also get it to the other side, which is a lot warmer. And of course, it has brightness. So you can go really bright or you can tone it down a little. But what I really want to show you is that this has a cover on it so that we can get the um, lighting to be either very harsh or when the cover is on, softer. So you get a sense immediately of what this is doing. And of course, if you're going to go and buy this light, it's something that's going to cost you an enormous amount of light money. But we do this because these are, well, they're professional lights that we're trying to use in the studio. And as I get into this next section, I want to show you how you can go and produce your own light at home and really have a lot of fun with it.